All right, ABC 10, Sean Cunningham, thrilled to be joined uh, right now from the bubble in Orlando, uh, a guy who's had a really incredible impact in a short amount of time on the Sacramento Kings team, and we're talking about Kent Bazemore. Baz, thanks so much for joining us. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, getting ready to gear up for tomorrow. Yeah, I got to wonder. I mean, NBA tips off today. For you guys, it's tomorrow. Are there butterflies? Does it feel like it's an opening night situation? Um, I mean uh... – you know, you won't know until you get there, but I think the work that uh, we've put in, you know, even before all of this, you know, after the all-star break up until now, getting everybody back, being full strength, I think we're, we're prepared, um, you know, for this environment. I've been echoing that, um, you know, since we got that, since uh, before we came. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to it. Buddy had a really good interview yesterday. I was uh, watching it, and, you know, to kind of hear the confidence he had in his guys, you know, it really makes us, you know, it really makes me feel good that everyone's on the same page. Yeah, that's awesome. And we talked about it just recently about, you know, the impact that you've had in such a short amount of time. And I got to wonder, I mean, as a play, you've been a player who's been traded, you've been able to pick your, the you know, the, the destination you go to, you've had a, a, a run where you've had to fight for everything in this league. Did, how much has that helped you make this situation work so well? Uh, because, you know, this is my eighth season in the NBA and you know, I've been on great teams. I've been on not so good teams. And, um, you know, I kind of know, um, you know, I have a good idea of, of what it takes to have a really good team, a really good culture and uh, good team chemistry. And, um, you know, the moment I walked into the Sacramento Kings locker room, you know, from that trade um, and, and to watch the guys kind of play and interact on the floor as, as players and then off the floor as, 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 as human beings. You know, that was a, a great sense of, uh, you know, togetherness and, um, you know, people holding each other accountable. Uh, you know, guys weren't afraid to say something to somebody, regardless of, you know, if you're a rookie or a vet. And those are the type of locker rooms that, you know, I saw a lot of success in. And, um, you know, with, with having Coach Walton at the helm, some guy, the guy that always has this, this calm about him, you know, when you're out there at war, Things may not be going your way, but you know when you got a coach that comes in the huddle, that's super poised, that's 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 been on championship teams, that you know comes from a great breed of basketball. You know it's 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 really, you know it's it's a really good mixture of of of, of you know that that beacon and then kind of the the youth and youth and exuberance we have. Does it even surprise you that it's worked out so well? Um, I and I'm a I'm probably one of the more optimistic guys you meet. Um. And, you know, that's largely because of uh, that's just who I am. And, you know, I, use, I lean on my optimism and faith a lot. Um, you know, I've leaned on it a lot, you know, throughout my career. And, um, you know, you got guys that put in the work, you know, Bogey Buddy, uh, Belly, all these guys, Harrison, you know, uh, you know, from top to bottom, Rashawn, Harry, these guys work extremely hard. You know, Darren Fox, they work extremely hard. And, um, you know, you can't be, you know, confident in yourself if you don't work hard. And, we have a bunch of guys that work extremely hard and, you know, I think it's starting to show. And because of that, I mean, it seems like your teammates have been extremely welcoming. I mean, here you are in a way, you know, to Sacramento Kings fans know it's been 13 straight years of no playoffs. It's the longest drought in the NBA. Um, how much are you aware of that? How much does that kind of motivate you guys? Uh, you know, every year is different, um, you know, and that's something not something I, you know, look at, you know, when I was in Atlanta, it was like 10 straight seasons and then I was there the first year we missed it. So um, it's, it's, you know, it, you take the good with the bad, you know, and that's what you got to understand about the NBA and about franchises is that, you know, there are ups and downs, you know, some last longer than others, but, um, you know, the, the, the downs really build up for, for, for great uh, stories. And um, I think, you know, we're poised um, to really do some damage down here. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people looking at this, this restart is, you know, a lot of teams picking up right where they left off, but uh, it's not going to work like that. You know, there's some new faces on, on, on you know, different rosters, guys that, um, you know, haven't even been here or in and out. You know, there's so many distractions going on. And, um, you know, even, you know, when we got down here, the start that we had with Harrison not being here, Alex not being here, Buddy not being here, uh, guys injured, you know, Fox rolling his ankle in practice, you know, just all the stuff that we kind of been through leading up to this point. And now we're here, you know, the day before standing for strength, um, you know, it says a lot about, you know, this team's character and, um, you know, our, our confidence heading into all of this. 
Yeah, I mean, the resiliency this team has shown, I mean, even in games, I mean, you guys can fall behind so early and, and it just seems like there's a spark or a flip that's a switch that's flipped and all of a sudden you guys are right back in it. Is that kind of a, just a characteristic within this team that you, that you recognize right away? Yeah, it's in our DNA. I mean, I, even you look at the last game against the Clippers, uh, you know, coming back and winning that game. I mean, a lot of people look at it as a scrimmage, but uh, we're here to work. Um, you know, we, We've been, you know, showing glimpses here and there of, of trying to get things back together. But I think a lot of it is just, you know, guys being overexcited, you know, for the moment, ready to, you know, get out there and play for real. And um, I know one thing, this this group has a, a, a great sense of urgency uh, when it comes to the moment. So, um, you know, we have guys that aren't afraid. Um, and, you know, that's one thing I respect about Buddy. Um you know, every shot he shoots, he he thinks it's going in. And when you got guys on the floor like that, you know, you got Corey Joseph, uh, man in the second unit, you know, defensive guy. You know, you got guys out there in the second unit, defensive-minded guys, and you got guys on the first unit. I mean, it's just we, – we have so much depth and, and so much versatility at, you know, all five positions. Uh, it really makes us dangerous this time of the year. Yeah, and you mentioned that game against the Clippers, one of the three scrimmages you guys have had. Has it – did did you take anything from those scrimmages that you can apply to this first game against the Spurs and this what they everyone has pretty much called it an eight game tournament for you guys? Um, is there anything that kind of carries over positives negatives? Well, well, we played against three very uh, seasoned teams as far as uh, veterans, uh, very experienced teams. Uh, Bucks best record in the league. Um, then you look at. Um, Miami, uh, you know, just, you know, well coached. Coach Bolster got those guys playing really well. A uh, bunch of good players, a bunch of vets over there. And that was kind of our first game out there. So, um, you know, we, we, we played them really well. And then the Clippers, um, you know, we had some success with them early on in the season, uh, right before, before, before COVID hit. So, um, you know, we, we, we feel like we're right where we need to be uh, as far as, you know, the competing part of it. You know, it may not be pretty at times, but, um, you know, I think the team that shows up and plays, you know, the hardest with 48 minutes is going to be the team that comes out on top. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are going to be, they may be shocked at kind of the results or the product of uh, what this kind of environment brings. Um, but I, I really feel, you know, deep down in my heart that we are a team that, you know, a lot of teams won't, don't want to see uh, at this time of the year. And in one of those scrimmages, I feel, and it's unfortunate because it didn't happen in a quote-unquote official game, but I think you had your your signature moment as a king. That dunk was unbelievable. I asked you about <laughs> it after the game. Um, not the unbelievable that I didn't think you could pull that off, but unbelievable in the sense that uh, just the positioning and everything, a two-handed jam the way it was, how great did that feel? And just uh, what does that do for you when you get a moment like that? Uh, you know, my my last uh, the last two and a half three years of my career has been you know played with little bumps and bruises uh missing a couple games here and there with knee issues and, and ankle issues and all this stuff and i've really uh taken the challenge of um you know really taking control of my body and uh really learning about my body why these things happen and uh had my trainer in, in atlanta wale and um as soon as COVID hit, I mean, as soon as they canceled our game, I mean, two days later, I was back in Atlanta. And then three days after that, we went right back to the drawing board. Um, you know, we worked on the basic hands, basic squat, basic lunge, kind of broke everything back down to square one. And then we started working on power and, and uh, you know, a lot of strength work. And, you know, I put on a couple pounds. Um, I'm moving a little bit more efficiently and that and efficiently and that dunk, uh, you know, it, it just felt amazing because, you know, it was the first time in a long time that I actually, you know, finished over somebody. Um, you know, if you watch the play, um, you know, you can just see, you know, the strength involved, you know, going up with two hands off one leg and, you know, coming in contact with another guy's body and basically, you know, standing my ground in midair. You know, that says a lot about, you know, core strength and, you know, all these other things, shoulder strength, shoulder stability, and, you know, the the – the end product of hanging on the rim and stuff was just kind of like, you know, what I felt in the moment because it was such a, a great moment to come from, you know, being one of the best athletes on the floor to, you know, being a shell of yourself, not being able to move as, as properly to, you know, you know, coming in where people are saying, oh, we're still trying to get in shape to, you know, making high level plays like that. I mean, it just feels amazing as, a, as an athlete. 
I appreciate you sharing that. And I mean, I'd be remiss too if I if I didn't point out that was a hell of a pass too. Oh, man, oh yeah. I mean, Harry Harry is one of the best passers, you know, from that mid post area. The game we'll ever see probably. I mean, uh, I, I even when I first got here, I think we had a play in uh in, in Detroit, similar play. I mean, he just hit me on a rope right in stride. I mean, I ain't had to reach back for it. I you know, it was just right in stride and. You know, that made the play because if I had to, you know, dribble that ball or if I catch it behind me, I mean, DiVincenzo did what he was supposed to do. He came over. He met me at the rim. I mean, that's – that's you know, if I'm not going up to dunk that, then that's probably a block, you know. So, um, you know, heck of a pass and um, look see look forward to see more of that. And it was quiet. I mean, I'm sure you heard your teammates, but normally you do that in an arena and you're hearing some reaction. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's good. That's why I say, man, we, we have a team that's – going to bring our own energy. Um, and, and that's what it's going to be. You know, we're going to see the teams that are going to stand by their teammates when they, when their boys are on the floor or, or if guys are going to go into their own world, if they aren't playing well, because, you know, this is, you know, this is a, an awkward time of the year. You know, every guy that people are used to seeing playing well may not play well. So how are you going to handle that? Are you going to go into your shell or are you going to continue to, you know, push your teammates and, 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 and root for everybody else? As a guy who's known for defense, um, at coming here to a team that really needed it, they have, you know, like you mentioned earlier, some really solid individual defensive players, but the team defense concept, it seems like it's still a work in progress, especially when mm-hmm. on the perimeter. Do you see that as the biggest challenge for you guys, especially in this environment where you're kind of thrown back into it? Is is that perimeter defense kind of the biggest challenge as you kind of go through this? Yeah, yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of what teams work on at this time, uh, you know, coming to this is their offense, is executing. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, with the right lineups and the right mixture, and I think, uh, you know, we have size and length at every position. And, um, you know, I think you'll see some different lineups out there, some different schemes, and um, we'll get better. And I think uh, the one thing that's going to be constant is, is our, our will to compete and the energy on, de- on the defensive end. Uh, and that allow us to get out and run. That allow De'Aaron Fox to get out in open court and really show the world how special he is when, you know, he's he's barreling down on other teams. So um, we worked on defense diligently. Um, uh, Coach Bob Byers and the rest of the coaching staff have, you know, done a tremendous job of kind of breaking down the sets that we're going to face and different ways to guard it, maybe an adjustment or two. But uh, mainly, you know, I think, uh, you know, guys just flying around each for each other, being there for each other is, is, is what, you, what you're looking for. Yeah, and with the environment that you guys are in, and I'll get to, the, I guess, the personal side of that in a minute and how you're dealing with all that. But from a team standpoint, you know, you got the Spurs tomorrow. Does the preparation change at all for you guys? Is there challenges in the preparation of, of gearing up for an opponent based on the environment you're in? Uh, not really. I mean, I know that they're, they're a different team. Um, you know, the Marcus Aldridge isn't here. So, uh, definitely a different, different team. They've been playing, um, a lot of small ball, Rudy get five, Marta Rosen at the four. So that's going to be, you know, it's going to be an up and down game and, uh, we're going to have to do a good job of communicating out there defensively and offensively just trying to take advantage of that. So, um, nothing changes, man. I mean, the, the, the game prep is a game prep. Uh, we got shoot around in the morning, so you know we'd get back into our regular, uh, regular schedule. The game's at eight o'clock, uh, which is prime time. So um, you know we kind of got in the morning to you know put a little bit of work in, and, and got the, the middle of the day to kind of get your rest, get your mind right. Then you know, once that ball goes up, um, you know it's just an eight game race. Yeah, I mean, and you know because of that, you know we mentioned the personal side of being in the bubble and. A lot of us in the in the local media have really felt for you because obviously, you know, you've got a young son, a pregnant wife at home that's due in September. Congratulations, by the way, in, future, in case I don't talk to you before then. Um, just just how do you adjust to that? And I, I can't imagine like if you were in this 10 years ago, we have technology right now where we're seeing each other face to face. That didn't exist like 10 years ago. You right. know, can you imagine going through this with the limitations uh, and without some of those, you know, luxuries that you have now? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely tough. Um, you know, the best advice I got throughout all of this is from my father-in-law. And uh, he said, you know, you're going to make a lot of sacrifices for your family in your 20s and 30s, you know, just to set up the rest of your life. So, um, you know, it's different for everyone. Um, and I don't think, you know, with everything I have going on, I don't think my situation is, you know, that much different than anybody else's. I mean, um, you know, waking up in the morning, going to, you know, get your son out of the crib is, 
you know, an experience that, you know, many haven't experienced yet and, you know, many come to know, you know, a lot of people understand that feeling, but, um, you know, that's kind of what's driving me. Um, you know, I fill that void with, um, you know, just going harder. Um, you know, if I can't, you know, see my son, I mean, I'll FaceTime him, I'll FaceTime my wife, you know, we, we talk throughout the day. I try to stay as connected as possible. And, um, you know, I just use that as fuel, um, that when I go back, that I'll, go back to a, a mother, a son, and um, a daughter soon after that's going to be proud of the work that I put in while I was down here. So um, and I tell her every day, you know, this is going to be, you know, well worth it. And, um, and I'm just making sure I stick to that promise. That's awesome. And I know you're trying to make the best of being out there. I know you've got a lot of amenities that are afforded to you, but following you on social media has been a blast, especially with, you know, cooking breakfast in your room. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, it's amazing because you go down there and then you have to get make adjustments as you go. And, and you had the griddle and you had pancakes going and sausage in the room, yeah. but then it gets shut down. I mean, how yeah. did that happen? Um, well, probably because I posted it, uh, and, you know, they came and say, you can't be cooking in a room, but you know, I, I cook a lot. You know, my, my diet is, um, I've changed it a lot over the past three or four years and, um, it's dialed in and I know it works for my body. And, uh, the first couple of days, I was just kind of frustrated with, you know, kind of what we had to eat. And, you know, my body wasn't recovering properly and, you know, I didn't have the energy that I needed. So, you know, I just took it upon myself. You know, if you, if you want to be great, you got to put in the work. And uh, my wife and I, we cook, you know, a ton during the season. Um, you know, it's basically home-cooked meals every every night pretty much when I'm home. So uh, I'm just used to cooking and, you know, it's nothing for me to kind of whip up some batter and some, some veggie sausage and, and go to work. Wow. I mean, it, it definitely looked good. I, w- I mean, that's one of the things when you're packing for such a long stay. I mean, hopefully you guys are there for months, but uh, right. when you get down there and you have to make adjustments on the fly, uh, what happens to that? Does it sit in the corner of the room now or do you have to like give it away? Yeah, right? yeah it's still it's still in here. I mean, I'll keep that, you know, for a long time. And I mean, it's, it's um, you know, something I can look back on. You know, this is a, you know, once in a lifetime experience. Um, and I'm sure when we all leave out of here, we're going to be different. Um, you know, these are, you know, moments in, in life that kind of shape who you are. And, uh, you know, for me, I just, you know, kept it going. I didn't, I didn't want to complain to anyone. I just kind of went on Amazon, bought me a griddle. They go to Whole Foods for you. I had them go pick up me some stuff and I just, you know, made it do. So I, I mean, that's just how I am, man. I'm going I'm I'm to find a way. <laughs> was, was there anything that, that you didn't pack that once you got there, you went, man, I'm going to need this aside from the griddle? Um, no, nah, man, I was pretty much prepared. You know, my, my, I've been, I've been with my wife now for seven years and, um, she's really, really helped me kind of understand how to live life, you know, live an efficient life, be a minimalist. Um, and you know, with the room I have, I got, I have my diffuser, I have my air purifier, you know, I got, you know, small things that kind of make the face, make the place feel like it's mine. You know, you walk in, you got certain aromas that you like during the day. so. I'm really into that. So I got a balcony, which is also great for my area to spend some time and, you know, kind of stare at nature a little bit. So, I mean, I, you know, I make it do with what I have, man. I I grew up in California, North Carolina, which is really small. So, uh, you know, I just think everything that I've been through in my life is kind of, you know, had me in this, this situation now. I'm just, you know, prepared for it, ready for it. Right on. I, you know, I think one thing you noticed since we, since you got here, I, I love talking golf with you. And I can't oh, yeah. let you get out of here before we talk a little golf. Uh, I know you've played several courses throughout Sacramento now. Um, what have you just made of the area and just how many courses are out here? And I got to think that that's maybe one of the little factoring moments that you have when you think about Sacramento long term for your future and saying, gosh, you know, they've got a lot of good courses. Dude, out here. There's some really, really good courses out there. And they're all, you know, um, you know, Till Bend is cool. You know, it's a public track. It's out of the way. It's never really slammed. So. Uh, spent a lot of time there, you know, just on the range and that little short game area they have over there. And then I drove up all the way up to Auburn, California and played Winchester, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, Yocha Dihi, um, Del Paso, uh, Wild Horse, um, Cadaverdera. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's just golf all over the place. The only issue I have is they aren't long enough. I mean, Yocha is the only one that's like super long. So, um, uh, Everywhere else is like 60, 100 yards, you know. So um, I like long tracks because I like to bang on the driver. So um, 
it's fun though, man. It's uh, I met some really good friends, you know, while I was out there playing, uh, playing a little golf. You know, golf is just its own little world, and you know, you meet people like you say, you can talk golf all day. So, um, yeah, man, it's just uh, it's a, it's a very nice place. Um, you know, Roseville and so many little pockets out there that are really nice. I, I didn't get a chance to check out Folsom Lake, but uh, that's something I'd like to hopefully do when I get back. Yeah, and I, I told you right off the get-go, I've known about your golf game for a while, and I don't think, you know, I'm not just saying it to blow you up because you're here, but, like, next to Steph, I mean, you two are probably the, the faces of active players in the of best active players in the league, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, dude, I've, I've put in – countless hours uh, just trying to learn more about the game um, and, you know, just watching it. I mean, that's all I do. I mean, my, my room in the TV, my TV in the room is probably just on Golf Channel all day. Uh, they got the Barracuda this weekend, which is always a fun one. Um, so I'm always tuned in and just kind of watching the poise. You know, I watch, you know, an hour of coverage and just kind of see the guys go through, you know, two bogeys or, you know, bogey here, three birdies, you know, just around to see, you know, the temperament, um, you know, club selection, how they play the holes, hear their, hear their uh, commentators talk about, um, you know, the mindset out there. And it's, it's, it's really helped me. You're just kind of staying in the moment um, or, you know, finding your places, zone out for a second, but coming back and getting back into it. So um, it's a fun game for me. And every day is different. You know, the body's different, especially playing basketball. You know, you go out, you know, you may play a day after a game and it was a physical game. So the setup may be a little bit different. You may not get the same turn. So there's so many things that you got to kind of work around in order to put together a good round. And it's the same thing with basketball. You may not have the same pop that night. So instead of trying to blow by guys, you got to, you know, change his pace up a little bit or, you know, rely on your screens a little bit more or just catch the ball close to the basket. So it's just so many variables, man, that, you know, if you really want to, you can kind of, you know, mess around with the game. and and make it fun for you it's interesting those parallels too right i mean i don't yeah. think anybody other than yourself would really be able to say that yeah basketball and golf there are parallels there oh dude it's, it's so there's so many parallels i mean just uh i mean the preparation mentally is is, is kind of the same you know just going into there you know with the confidence and, and sticking to your game plan you know how am i going to play and how do i feel you know you assess how you feel before the game you assess who you're playing against. You kind of look at the defenses they play. You look at your matchups, and, you know, you see their rotations off the bench, you know, because they're coming off the bench. So you kind of see, you know, who you're going to be out there on the floor with, and you kind of try to, you know, not, you know, foreshadow how you're going to play because it may be totally different, but you want to have an idea of how you're going to attack the game. And mainly for me, it's, it's defense first. You know, I'm, I'm coming in with defensive mentality. I want to kind of wreak havoc playing the passing lanes. Uh, run the floor, get some easy stuff, and you know everything else kind of falls into place. So uh, when I go out on the, on, on the course, you know I drive the ball really well. My short game is really good, so I'm going to lean on those two things. I'm going to hit fairways. I'm going to have some confidence in my my approach shots, and whatever happens after that, just getting the ball in the hole. So you know, those are just <laughs> parallel. You can just pull pull out of the air. That's awesome, and I know you're probably just like every other hack out there that you know you've got the best course you've ever played and then the bucket list that you haven't uh for that what would kent Bazemore's favorite course be that he's played in in the in the bucket list one well i played man do i mean these courses are so they're so like they're amazing but they're just so different in their own way that to me like i played cypress point um out there out there uh, near pebble beach and then uh pinehurst is probably well, those are probably my favorite two courses. I love Pinehurst because I'm from North Carolina, but just the history of Pinehurst and, you know, how beast of a course it is. Like, you have to hit really good shots there. Um, you know, the way the greens are undulated, you know, the pin, pay, uh, pin placements. Um, and you can land the ball 15, 20 yards right or left of the pin, and it'll funnel all the way down. You know, it's just, you know, fun stuff like that. And um, bucket list would probably be either wing foot, or uh, Pine Valley. Right those on. Those are two that I want to play for sure. Those are great. Yeah, those are great. And as someone who, you know, got my start coming up through the Celebrity Players Tour to jump into media, ah. uh, it, it was amazing. I, I'm thinking, man, Kent's got to be right there. I don't know. Have you ever participated in one of those Celebrity Player Tour events? No, yeah. I was uh, I was actually slated to go to Tahoe this summer, but obviously COVID happened. But um, I'm looking to get out there uh, eventually, hopefully next summer, depending on, you know, what the season looks like or, 
uh, what they choose to do with, with the season moving forward. But definitely want to get out there. And, you know, I play in my club championship. I play in my member guests. I play in my, uh, my, um, my really good friends up in Ohio as member guests. So uh, I play in a lot of competitive stuff during the summer just to keep that edge competitive. And it keeps you, keeps you working towards something. So I'll go do my strength and conditioning. I'll go get with my swing coach, you know, I'll, I'll prep for these events and, you know, I'll go in trying to win. So, um, you know, it just kind of keeps that, those competitive juices flowing. So, you know, you aren't really, you know, running around doing crazy stuff in the middle of the summer. Yeah. And I mean, I know like, you know, you and Steph are so competitive. Uh, you guys remain a, a close friendship. He's not that far away from here in Sacramento, but right. you know, like everyone, I imagine there's, that fantasy foursome, those three other people that you'd love to maybe one day play with in a group. Um, do you have kind of that fantasy foursome? And if of maybe people that you've played with or maybe you haven't, who would that be? I know I'm putting um, you on the spot there, so I apologize. Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> I, I mean, for the people that I haven't played with, a dream foursome would probably be uh, Tiger, um, Dustin Johnson, and uh, Justin Thomas. That'd be my dream through uh foursome and then with the people i have played with it'd be myself steph um uh, my guy corey and uh breezy those are those are breezy and corey are my two my really two good friends i mean they probably appreciate it more than anything but uh those are the two guys that kind of my financial advisor corey got me into golf and then breezy was my you know my first coach that kind of really got me from shooting you know, the hundreds to uh, low, I mean, high high 80s. You know, he kind of helped me take that first leap. And, you know, he still watches me to this day. We still work with some stuff. So, um, yeah, those are my guys. I like the route you took because I imagine those are probably the three tour players that, that you might admire most right now on the tour. And, uh, you know, considering that you're going up against guys that are that have their tour card, you don't, but you, you can hold right. your own. <laughs> yeah. I, I would have been trying to find people that are just terrible that, you know, except for Samuel nah, Jackson, I mean, that's my favorite actor. <laughs> dude, you gotta, you gotta think like, you know, the only way that I, I've gotten better is because I play like all my buddies are scratch or, or better. Like um, Cameron Hooper, he, he was actually college roommates with Dustin Johnson. I mean, I still shoot, seen him shoot 66. I got my buddy Freddie over in Sweden, and I see him shoot 65, 67. I, I mean, these guys are just, they just fill it up. Um, so, you know, you're playing with them, and, you know, you go out there, you shoot your 79, they shooting, you know, 71, 69. It's like, dang, I play like crap. But, I mean, in all reality, you know, it's, it's you're playing, you're getting better. You know, you stick to the – you know, you're getting upset at your shot that you stuck at 20 feet and they're sticking at uh, 8, 10 feet. You know, it's not a bad shot. It, you know, those guys are just good, but it really brings the best out of you. You know, you you take your time over shots. You're really, really uh, deliberate in, you know, your routine and, um, you know, you're dialed in. And obviously when you play with those guys, it's, it's not as much, you know, chatter as it is with, you know, just the everyday people. Some people like to talk when they play golf. I'm a, I kind of like to go in and out, you know, I talk here and there, I'll, you know, I see good shot, nice shot, but mainly I'm, you know, I'm dialed in and, you know, trying to shoot the course record. And you've been a guy when watching on basketball where throughout your career, I mean, early on, I mean, you, you made Bays Mooring famous. It went to a video game, uh, the celebrations, you're a very demonstrative player that way. Is that the same way on the golf course? No, do not. It's, um, and probably I probably should incorporate that a little bit more, but I'm just like a I don't know. Golf takes a a, a ton of focus for me now. I mean, it's gotten better, but um, you know, I, I get on you know just like basketball. You play for four or five minutes, and then you know you got a timeout. You know, but in golf, you know, there's really no timeout. You know, you kind of you break it up into three holes. You know, you try to come out, play your first three holes at even. You know, between one under and one over. And then, you know, you go from there. You know, if you're struggling a little bit, you're trying to stop the bleeding. If you, you know, you're feeling good, you're just trying to, you know, find that line, keep pushing that line a little bit. So, um, you know, it's a fun game, man. It's, um, it's, it's helped me a lot with my temperament. Uh, obviously, I'm still really intense on the court. I mean, I don't think that's ever going to change, but um, it's, calmed, it's calmed me down a lot. 
Yeah, and I was to say, as a guy who made Days Morning famous, I've had my eyes on you to try to see how what the celebration is like. What I mean, I've seen you fire up the crowd in Sacramento since you got here, but I haven't right. seen the Days Morning yet. Have you given that up? Did you retire that? Do you remember the last time I mean, you did it? I, I really don't remember the last time I did it, man. You know, it's it's uh, you know, game. The game is different for me now. Life is a little bit different for me now. Where, uh, you know, my focus is more so being, you know. Uh, I don't want to say a peacekeeper, but you know, my my I'm, I'm watching my guys. I'm watching how they, um, the body language. I'm watching, you know, how they talking to anyone, everybody else. You know, I'm I'm really trying to be conscious of, you know, how how my teammates are doing more so than how I'm involved in the game at times. You know, so um, I think the days morning is taking a back seat to to some of that. You know, more so trying to be a leader, mentor, because the teams are a lot a, a lot uh, younger now. You know, when I was days more, and I was a young guy, and people didn't have to worry about me because I'm 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 gonna be happy. So uh, you know, I just focus on trying to make sure everybody's morale is in a good spot. You know, the team is, you know, we got our blood pumping. Yeah, it sounds as if you know you still have that joy. It's just harnessed differently. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh- uh, I, I, before I let you get out of here, I, I know I've gone a little over here, but uh, I know we're going to, we're going to see some, some social justice messages on the back of the Jersey. Uh, we're going to see yeah. demonstration in a way that we haven't seen before. I think people are going to expect players now to take uh, take a knee during the anthem and things like that. Your education reform message, I think is incredible, especially for coming from a guy who has two, you know, majors himself in criminal justice and human services. Um, I know that is a big portion of what you do within your foundation as well. Mm-hmm. Do you look at this opportunity ahead of you in the bubble, not only for you and your teammates, but just how do you look at it in terms of getting that message across, but all the while trying to f- do your job as well? Does that make sense? Like, how do you yeah. kind of balance that? Well, I mean, hopefully, um, you know, when people see that on the back of my jersey, they they hopefully they dive and they try to you know look up you know who I am what I've been through and you know who I've become and I I base a lot of that on just being educated um you know and you know your circle having the right people around you um and you know being educated encompasses a lot of things um the decisions you make uh the people you want to be around um what you choose to learn um, you know, I think all these things, all these things are important. And I think education is an avenue to real change. Um, if we can build better citizens, build smarter citizens, and, you know, when, when voting happens, you know, we'll have people more well-versed in what's actually going on. Um, you know, because a lot of the stuff you may see on the internet or from the media is just smoke and mirrors. You know, it's not, uh, mainly it's, it's, it's a distraction of some sort. Um, so, you know, I'm really, um, starting a program back home, um, just to teach the kids in my area. We're going to start with soft skills, you know, little soft skills, sixth and ninth graders. Um, I'll have, we'll have zoom calls twice a month. Um, I'll give them assignments, um, you know, and, you know, we'll just, I'll kind of, they'll have to write me a one pager on a question or a movie. And I'll just kind of gauge how they're thinking because, uh, perspective is a, is a great way to educate as well. I remember the first time I came down to the wild world of sports, I was 14 years old and I, I got to see OJ Mayo, Bill Walker. I got to see Kevin Love, Derek Rose, Eric Gordon, Lou Williams. I mean, I got, I got to see so many guys that were, you know, way up there and it just really drove me. Cause I wouldn't, when I came down here, I mean, I, I played okay, but I wasn't, you know, is who is this long, long, lanky kid with six wristbands on? You know, is this one of those deals? So uh, it really piqued my interest to say, oh man, I actually have to, you know, put on some work to be as good as these guys. You know, you know, just that little, little, little click there kind of opened up, you know, my eyes, and and that's what I kind of want to do for the kids back home. Uh, it's an entire program, and uh, upon graduation, we look to you know have a little bit of scholarship money set aside for them so they continue their education. Um, and you know, what, what the education system teaches kids today is reading, writing, and arithmetic. And that's just basically for a factory job. You know, you go work at a factory and you got to learn how to read, write, and that. But what they, what they're teaching, you know, is just teaching kids how to test. So they're taking a lot of the creativity away from school. So science, arts, 
this stuff is, you know, instead of being taught for two hours a day, it's only taught for 30 minutes. So we aren't allowing kids to really um, become who they are. You know, we, we kind of follow them through the system and um, it's time for change. I mean, we got some of the brightest people in this world. America hasn't gotten as far as it, as it, as it has, you know, by just teaching people reading, writing, and arithmetic. And that's why when they say this guy didn't have a high school diploma, he didn't need school. I mean, I mean that could be the case, but he just found his level of creativity. He found what worked for him, and he was able to branch off and do his own thing. But if we can have, you know, 200 kids graduate that, you know, all have 3.0 or higher GPAs, I mean, think about the jobs. You know, think about the competition, you know, of, of us pushing each other to be better and just think about the overall product, and I think the world would be a better place just from that. No, that's well said. And to hear you say that, you know, you're actually teaching. I mean, that's, I guess it should come as no surprise for a guy that has an education background like yourself, but to be an NBA player as well and a new father and a husband, I mean, yeah. that's a lot on your plate. Is that something that yeah. you just feel that will kind of gravitate towards even when the playing career is done? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I saw, you know, when they sent out the list, I saw education reform and I saw mentor. Uh, it was the, the two words that popped out on the page and they were like, like two of the last three words on the page. So um, always, you know, I've always, you know, like to teach, you know, my mom was a teacher, um, you know, every, you know, every teacher I had in school was very, very influential. You know, when I was coming up, it was the village mentality. My mom gave my teachers free reign to, you know, discipline me in whatever way needed, you know, so I had a lot of people holding me accountable. So we can kind of, you know, incentivize, you know, the teachers, like in Canada, teachers get paid way more. It's, it's a totally different job than it is in the States. And I also learned that education is nowhere in the constitution. So, I mean, it's, it's, this is a system we built. So, I mean, it's not going to, it's not going to take, you know, it's not going to take the, um, the protests and that some of this other stuff needs, but, you know, it's a, a couple tweaks here and there. Um, you know, extracurricular stuff or other side programs that we can get uh, 10 to 15 kids to to start, you know, to start our next wave of leaders, you know, for small areas and build upon that. And then we got these kids pulling up other kids and, you know, you just start with a little seed, a little soil and some water and just watch it grow. And I think over the next, you know, 10, 15 years, um, I know for, you know, in my area and, you know, whoever else wants to, you know, be a part of this, you know, I, I'm looking to see, you know, some, some real change. That's awesome. I mean, if people wanted to see any information on your foundation, do you, do you add, I mean, I know I'm putting you on the spot. Is there anywhere they can yeah. go? Uh, so right now I'm actually uh, I kind of going back to the drawing board uh, with my foundation. I'm a, I'm a revamp. So right now it's just kind of, um, I mean, the program's through it, but it's it's, it's not really active. Um, kind of revamping. I'm going to get a board and I'm going to get some people that's kind of uh, aligned with my vision um, of one day, you know, building an academy. Um, so um, that's what I'm working towards right now. And, and this program is a seed to that. So um, we're still in the in the, the beginning stages of, of getting it started, but um, we are, we will um, hopefully in the next six weeks, six weeks have something. Um, starting and um, looking forward to uh, making a change because I know for me, you know, when I have my first kid, you know, get their, you know, high school diploma and head off to college, it's going to be, you know, a grave, you know, it's going to feel really good to me. You know, that's, you can help, you can help kids, um, you can help kids without having to give them, you know, money or supply. I mean, you could just help them become their the, the, uh, better selves and, you know, figure out what they want out of life. Yeah, that's awesome. That's well said. I can't thank you enough, Baze. I know I went way over my time. <laughs> I, oh, you can do it. I mean, dude, I ain't got nothing else to do, man. I'm just out hanging out, man. I figured you'd be out on the golf course or something today, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably headed there in a little bit. That's yep. awesome. I, I can't yes, thank you enough. And best of luck to you. Stay healthy. Uh, all, continued success, especially with, you know, with the family situation, you know, I, I can't imagine being in that situation for you guys, but uh, I know it gets tipped off for real. And uh, I know a playoff, a playoff appearance for Sacramento, even though there's no fans in attendance, these Kings fans would be loving it. If they were set this yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's make it happen. All right. So thanks again. All right, bro. Take it easy.